This video is about Cox Proportional Hazard Survival Regression or Cox Regression for short. So let's start right away with the first question. What is Cox Regression? Cox Regression is used in survival analysis to determine the influence of different variables on survival time. This is done with the Cox Proportional Hazards model. So what exactly is survival time analysis? In survival time analysis, the survival times of subjects are measured and a survival curve is plotted. Usually the subjects have some kind of disease. The survival curve then shows how many of the subjects remain alive over time. The time considered does not have anything to do with the survival time. Nevertheless, one speaks of the survival time and the survival time analysis. Generalized, we can say, in survival time analysis, a variable is considered that has a start time and when a certain event occurs, an end time. The time between the start time and the event is considered in the survival time analysis. The time can be measured, for example, in days, weeks or months. Now, of course, there is the big problem that a study has limited resources. For resource reasons and simply because one wants to publish the results at some point, there is a start and an end date of a study. If a case does not have a definite event, it is referred to as censored. Several methods have been developed to deal with this issue. Please have a look at my video on the Kaplan-Meier curve. But now back to the Cox regression. For example, if you want to analyze survival time after a disease is detected, you are often not interested in survival time per se, but in what has an influence on survival time. So we want to know if survival time depends on one or more factors, the so-called predictors. For simple situations with a single factor, with only two values, the log rank test is used. So for example, if you want to test whether there is a difference in survival time when two different drugs are given to a patient. However, if you want to include the age of the subjects, for example, a special type of regression is needed, namely the proportional hazard survival regression. The regression should then evaluate the effects of the individual predictors on the shape of the survival curve. So as predictors, we have the drug used and the age of the person. We now want to know what influence these variables have on the survival time curve. And we do this with the Cox regression. Let's look at an example. Let's assume this is our data we want to evaluate. Each row describes a patient with the corresponding disease. The time indicates when the event or death occurred. Here we have the data which drug was used and here we have the age of the people. In the first step, we must now calculate the Cox regression, which we do online with DataTab. Then we go through how to interpret the results. To calculate the Cox Proportional Hazard Survival Regression, we simply go to datadep.net and copy our data into this table. Just copy and paste as in Excel. Now we click on Survival Analysis. Under this tab, depending on which variables you click on, different methods of survival analysis will be calculated. If you only click on the time and the status, the Kaplan-Meier curve will be displayed. If you click on the drug, you will get the log rank test. And if you click on the age, you will get the Cox regression. Here below you get the results. Let's have a closer look at it. The first column contains the names of the variables. The first row indicates the variable drug and the second row indicates the age. Most important of this table is the estimated regression coefficient and the p-value. With the p-value you can see if the regression coefficient is significantly different from zero. 
So the null hypothesis is, in the population the coefficient is zero. Let's say, as usual, that we set our significance level at 5%, then for p-values less than 5% or 0.05, the null hypothesis is rejected and the coefficient is significantly different from zero. In the case of drug, the p-value is less than 0.05 and therefore we have a significant difference from zero. In the case of age, we get a p-value of 0.221, which is greater than 0.05. Therefore, in this case, the null hypothesis is not rejected and we assume from this data that age has no significant effect on the survival curve. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.